Hi everybody, welcome back. You may have noticed I have an entire section of my website dedicated to bee-friendly gardens. While I cover a wide variety of plants that provide nutritional sustenance to bees, I'd like to take this opportunity to switch gears and direct your attention to milkweed. Milkweed is a perennial vine that grows via a creeping root along the ground. It's possible that all of the plants that you see here came from the same seed. During the summer, these green spires burst forth with five-pointed flowers that attract monarch and swallowtail butterflies to name a few. They produce a sappy-like nectar that butterflies suck up through their proboscis like a straw, but that's not all they're good for. Butterflies will also lay their eggs on the stalks so that when their caterpillar babies hatch, they have something to feed on, namely the leaves. Monarch populations, like honeybees, are in rapid decline due to pesticide use and habitat loss, and that stinks. So I'm going to show you how to plant and harvest your own milkweed patch in the hopes that we can play some small role in bolstering their survival odds. This is what the plant looks like in early autumn, right before the seed pods open up. When the plant starts to go dormant, you're going to notice that the plant turns golden in color. And if you want to harvest the seeds, that's your cue because at that point, you could be relatively assured that the seeds are viable. You're looking for dry seeds and have a nice dark brown color to them. This particular brand of milkweed is a Sleepia speciosa, or showy milkweed for those of us who aren't attending Hogwarts this year. But that's not all I got. I went online and got a wide variety of seeds from different plants so that I'll have a little bit of color in my garden this year. We got a Sleepia curasavica, Syrica, Incarnata, Autumn Blaze, and my personal favorite, Asclepius tuberosa. I just like the name. If you just go tearing into one of these things whole hog, you're going to end up with a lot of fluffy mess. So, you just break it open along the seam, then peel it back about halfway. And then just use your thumb to scrape the seeds off of the fluff. Fast forward a couple of months. It's early December. This is the patch of soil I have readied, and I'm about to start sowing the seeds that I collected during the fall. You might ask why I'm doing this during the dead of winter. The answer is stratification. During the colder months of the year, the ground and the seeds within it will cyclically freeze and thaw. Many seeds that have adapted to cold climates will stay dormant until they've undergone this process. Otherwise, they could germinate too early and then freeze to death before they had a chance to properly get established. My hope is, that by leaving nature to its own devices and by putting a lot of seeds into the ground, I'll have at least a small percentage of plants that reach maturity next summer. But just in case that doesn't happen, I'm going to keep half of my seeds in reserve. And then come springtime, I'll pop them into the fridge for a month or so to mimic the stratification process. Once that's complete, I'll germinate them in sterilized soil under a grow light. Which of these processes is going to work better? I don't really care. As long as I have a couple of full grown plants from each genus, I'm a happy camper. They'll come back year after year, and they'll produce more and more seed pods and flowery stalks for our winged brethren to feed on. Remember, milkweed is a perennial vine that grows via a creeping root. I'll be back next summer with footage of the results. I think we'll both be pleasantly surprised, but until then, if you want more information about bee or butterfly-friendly gardens, check out my website at jeffscookbook.com. Happy gardening.